Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode, episode 140, daunting, of the Retro Gamers Podcast. Larry here. And Anthony here. What is going on, and how are you? I'm, I'm, I'm doing great. <laughs> it looks like I got a little bit of a different setup there behind you. I'm liking it. Yes, uh, I got angry with my living room and rearranged it. Fair enough, that happens to the best of us. <laughs> it, it really does. It, it, it was a fight I won, so that's all that matters. <laughs> Good. I also got angry with my bedroom and got a new bed. So. Oh, I saw that at Nectar. That's pretty cool. I heard they're good. Very, very, very comfortable. A... Um, and I can actually sleep on it. <laughs> Which is important. That's the oh, Siri. Shut up! You're not part of the show. Siri, stop. Um, that's good. You know, it's funny because I also got a new bed in the new apartment, and nice. mine is like 15 feet off the ground. It feels like. Oh, cool. And I haven't had a good night's sleep, and not because of the bed. I think just ironically, just haven't been getting good night's sleeps. New, new, new location. I, I've only had my bed for my new bed for two nights, and I have not gotten a good night's sleep. But not because of the bed. The bed is extremely comfortable. Yeah, mine too. And right? and, and it's an adjustable bed, and it's got a massager in it. Oh so it's dear. Like, yeah, so it's like it's got all these things that make me really <laughs> comfortable. What's not comfortable is when your cat Link, wherever he is. Um, who now isn't used to me sleeping in my bed because I've been sleeping in my recliner for, yeah. you know, years. <laughs> um, d- realizes now that I'm in the bed. So that he takes that as a cue to jump up in the bed in the middle of the night and then walk on top of me back and yeah, forth. I, I think he did and, that to me once when I was staying there. Yes. So five times. <laughs> I, I, I've i gotten very little sleep over the last two nights. And then when I look at him, I'm like, what am I supposed to do? <laughs> <laughs> oh man! So sleepless nights for me in a brand new bed that's super comfortable. Fantastic. Yes. <laughs> well, uh, well, it sounds good. Well, we both got new beds, so that's interesting. Yes. And and ironic? No, I guess just coincidence. I guess is more the term. Yeah, cool. Yeah, I would I would call it a coincidence. It's not like we live together. No, this is true. Uh, all right. So uh, well, I also want to uh, just really quickly uh, just mention because by the time this drops, it's yesterday. When we're recording it, it's today. So uh, definitely, you know. Want to put out our thoughts and prayers to all those men and women who aren't here anymore on this Memorial Day here in the United yes. States. Um, you know, those who aren't with us anymore to allow us to be able to do podcasts like this and pretty much allow us to do everything we do in this country. So we're definitely thinking of all of you, always. Yes, and we are extremely grateful. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so it's been a busy well, for you, you've been pretty busy, um, which I'm I'm really excited because I know you kind of wanted to talk to me about it. I'm like, nope, mm-hmm. save it for the podcast. Um, yes. We're going to uh, do a little bit of uh, nerding out here just for a moment, and we're going to step away from games for a second. Anthony, you were able to uh, attend. Now, was this like a sneak peek, or is this the grand opening of uh, Star Wars Land? Oh, so, well, first off, it's not called Star Wars Land. It's oh. called Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. I like Star Wars Land. <laughs> yeah, they're not they're not calling it Star Wars Land. All right. So, um, and uh, you visit you are visiting the planet of Batu. Oh, God bless you. Which is uh, yeah, exactly. Um, it's a completely fictional uh, land that they created specifically for Disneyland. I don't okay. think it exists in the films, um, but uh, or maybe it does, and I just don't, I don't know, know Star Wars that well. Anyway, um, uh, it was not the grand opening. It was actually a. Um, uh, what did they call it? It's uh, um, kind of like so, employee preview. Oh, okay. I got gotcha. you. Oh, so okay. it was basically open to employees only so that mm-hmm. they can get an understanding of the land How because, works. you know, because employees need to be well versed of everything going on at Disney because when guests ask them questions, they need to give them answers. So they allowed, so the employees were allowed to visit the land before the grand opening, which is this Friday, May 31st. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. And my, I have a friend who's an employee over there. He got two tickets. He was kind enough to invite me. I was more than happy to accept because <laughs> I really, you know, um, I may not be the biggest Star Wars nerd. I was like, but I'm a huge theme park nerd. Yeah. I like Star Wars. It's an, you know, and I knew that um, obviously with Disney they were going to do something special. So I had the opportunity to go check that out on Sunday. The um, um, you know, all those aerial shots that they keep showing, you know, yep. like the uh, you know, oh, it's all being built. I mean, it looks huge. I- is it a large area of the park? It's a good, it's a good space. It's definitely a good space. You don't feel like you don't feel like it's a tiny thing that you're crammed into. Um, so it is spacious. 
did they take over like an old spot? Yeah, they took. Well, they took, some of it. Uh, I think part of it may have been parking. I think part of it okay. was like employee parking. The other part of it was like in the frontier land. There was like a, a saddle ranch in the back, which gotcha. is a restaurant and stuff like that. Gotcha. So they, yeah. So it was like a combination of parking and um, okay, uh, a piece of the uh, park. Yeah. Um, so it was great, uh, and you know, uh, and just um, the secrecy around it, of course, was insane. Um, before you were allowed to go in the land and you had, uh, they had people in timed blocks. So okay. every, uh, everybody had a four hour block in oh, the wow. land. Uh, and that's all you can do yeah. after the four hours were over. You had to leave. You wouldn't be allowed to get on anything. Okay. Um, so no rides. To, yeah. So they were checking bracelets basically okay. the whole time. Um, and the, uh, the cool thing about it is first thing you do, like you're, you're in line when you go past security, they hand you a little bag. Like this, like this big. Okay. And that little bag was for your cell phone. And you had to seal oh. your cell phone in the bag. <laughs> wow. And you, you were not allowed to Good use, Lord. to have your cell phone out and about throughout the land at all. You that know, is it's, how, very high level. Like they, they really did not want any of this to come out. Disney's not messing around. Good no. Lord. Uh, no, I remember, I remember when you took me on a back lot tour, you were just like, don't take any pictures. I'm like, all right, cool. Disney's like, take pictures. You know, you will cease to exist. <laughs> yes. In fact, there have been, my, to my understanding, there have been a handful of leaks online. Okay. Um, and Disney has been so on top of it that you don't even realize that there have been leaks online. Like, they've oh, been going wow. after them like crazy. That's because crazy. they don't, they, they do not want it out. I don't um, blame the, them. Yeah. And the press event... The press event is tomorrow. So once the press event happens, uh, which is Wednesday, um, you'll start seeing more images. But let me tell you yeah. something. Um, images really don't do it justice. You have to go. You just have to see it to believe okay. it. Because um, once you enter the land itself, there are three different entrances you can go through. And they're kind of tunnel-like. They're big, large tunnel type of things. Mm -hmm. Once you're in, you don't even know you're in Disneyland anymore. It is 100% immersive. Uh, you look around you, it's all theme, all theme. Mm -hmm. you look up all theming. You do oh, wow. not, see, you do not see anything outside of the land. Now in one oh. little area, you can see the Matterhorn, Okay, but they're waiting, they're waiting for the trees to grow, to block it out. Oh. Like they've already <laughs> planned. They've already planned yeah. how they're going to block all of this out. Holy but but the bottom line is for the most part, when you're walking around, all you're seeing is Batu. So mm -hmm. after about an hour, hour and a half in the land, we completely forgot we were even at Disneyland. Yeah, honestly, just, I mean, that's that's how it felt. That's crazy, especially yeah. like uh, you know, saying that they have like four hour blocks. I don't know what you're gonna do in four hours, but it sounds like, like you just said, just walking around. Yeah, must be must be insane. Um, and you know, the only aerial photo we had uh, was again them kind of building the 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 infrastructure, and of course they had what seemed to have been a life size Millennium Falcon. Uh, yeah, that, um, that's exactly what it looked like. Yeah, that's um, and awesome. it's it, yeah, and it was amazing. Uh, the uh, the cantina, which I did yeah. not get into because okay. the the line to get into the cantina was over two hours. Oof. So hey, you better off going to the pop up cantina as usual. Yeah, are. no cantina for me. No blue milk for me. <laughs> uh, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. And, well, they, and they sell it. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, but overall, like it was a uh, you know I don't know how much information I can give. It was just, right. it's just a, it's a fantastic experience, completely immersive. I highly recommend anybody who is a Star Wars fan or even anybody who's not a Star Wars fan. It's worth the experience just to see how well something can be put together in this sense. Because like I said, I was like, I've been, I've been in a lot of theme parks in my life and to walk into this one specific land and to feel completely immersed, mm -hmm. uh, it's just, it, it, there's just something about it. It's really special. So, um, right. yeah, awesome experience. That's awesome. So again, the official opening is the thirty first of May. Friday, May thirty first. Um, reservation only. Oh, so really? For the first six weeks, you have to reserve your time. Or I'm sorry, sure, phone, already, yeah, it's okay. okay. I'm uh, sure you have to uh, you have to res you have to reserve your time, or you're not getting in. And trust me, the reservations are already gone. Yeah, um, yeah. You you would have to be staying at their hotels to actually get an opportunity to get a reservation. Is my understanding. Oh, wow. okay. uh, so yeah, they go to they go to hotel guests first. Um, but my understanding is they're already, it's already booked solid. So oh, that is insane. I can't even imagine what it's going to, you know, it's, it's one thing when you're at Disney and then you see all, you know, you see Mickey, Donald, Goofy, everyone walking around. 
Lord only knows what it's going to be like when you walk in and, and yeah. you see the characters in the movie just just be yeah. there. It's going to be insane. Yeah. That's cool. Oh, and one, la- one last thing yeah. to touch on is when I say immersive, I mean 100% immersive in the sense that when you're walking through the land, when you're going through the merch shops and everything like that, it's it's not Star Wars land themed. It's Batu. You're In other words, you're not going to find a magnet that says Star Wars land, Disneyland, oh. or you're not going to see Mickey dressed as Darth yeah, yeah. Vader. It's official merchandise that you would buy on that planet. Oh, that it can seem a little annoying, but okay. No, it's actually not. It's yeah. it's it's like a different level of theming. So in other words, okay. like they want you to feel like you're on this planet, and on this planet, they're not yeah. selling Disney merchandise. They're selling Batu okay. related merchandise. Huh. So Absolutely. yeah, it just takes it to another level. Really well done. That's 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 a lot of planning. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yes, it is. That's, uh, but that's awesome. All right, cool. So everyone uh, check out uh, what I'm going to call Star Wars Land. But officially, it's what is it again? Batu. No, and I, that's the planet. I meant the name of the area. Galaxy. Batu. No, I oh, said it was Star, Wars, Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> so, go Batu. Check. <laughs> Batu. Farakta Niktu. Um, there you go. So, all right, that sounds pretty cool. Uh, also, I know you mentioned right before that you hit a barcade again. Um, yep. What was that like? Now, you know, with the general public being able to, attend? yeah. Now that it was, uh, now that it was open, it, you know, kind of got an opportunity to see just how how it was doing on a Friday night. Um, uh, went, I only went over there for like an hour just with a friend because yeah. he just wanted to hit it up for a little while. So we went, we played some games. Um, it was fairly busy. Granted, it was early in the night. It was only like maybe seven o'clock. Oh, okay, yeah. But, but fairly busy. It's kind of in a neighborhood that's kind of upcoming hipstery kind of thing. Okay. So. So um, a lot of hipsters hanging out in there. Okay. Uh, but uh, yeah, no, it was it was um, it was really good. Played a bunch of games. Played a couple of games that weren't working the last time we were there, which is oh. kind of cool. okay. Good. Um, yeah, yeah, they're good uh, with that. They fix their own games. Like if something yeah. goes down, they have their own people coming in. So yeah, and the cool thing about it too is that the uh, the front area and the back area were pretty were were um, were decently packed. So okay. Um, so so it was nice to see that it, it was definitely lively. Things were going well there. So, uh, you know, um, I'm hopeful that, uh, you know, it remains. Awesome. You know, it's funny because then last week, when I, and we want to give a shout out last week to Mario, who uh, substituted uh, for you last week because you were yes, busy. Yes, thank you, Mario. Much appreciated. Yep. So, uh, and, and I remember, you know, after I saw your video originally when you were at the soft open of Barcade Los Angeles uh, and you walked by the X-Men, uh, X-Men machine, you know, I'm like, wait a minute, I have this game. And like purposely broke out the 360, um, and like just re- picked it up like it was old hat. I'm like, ah, this is awesome. And then maybe something we could talk about down the road. Uh, we may have talked about it in the past, like because I got X Men arcade game on Xbox 360. I got the Simpsons arcade game yeah. on the PS3, and like they pulled them from the shop, so you can't buy them anymore on the respective shops. And then it's like, you know, I was going, we, me and Mario were going through the 360. And the amount of arcade games that Konami, especially, yeah. was putting out on the 360 was ridiculous. Yeah, so, I mean, it was the perfect opportunity for them to make some money with some old, you know, old games. Yeah. So hopefully we'll see that again because you know a lot of Neo Geo stuff, a lot of arcade stuff yep. comes out on the Switch, uh, PS4, and Xbox One. Um, the the final thing uh, to first get your perspective on because then we have some. Uh, special that we'll we'll introduce with it but uh you were also at the uh, i don't know what they call it block party or whatever uh for the poly mega yeah i was um and um actually uh thank you very much for letting me know that was happening because i completely missed that (laughs) i wanted to take advantage so um there's a video game shop in uh little tokyo in downtown la um that larry you actually came you you visited i was gonna say which when you say that which one was it we went there in november it's called retro game camp it was the one that was oh, under, it was the one that yes. was underground and had all the Japanese yes. imports. Oh, that place was awesome. Fantastic. Yep. Um so they were the ones that were hosting the Polymega mm-hmm. for the uh, for the preview. And right. so um so I went down there on Sunday to check it out. And I thought maybe I was going to be there like 5 or 10 minutes, you know, just mm-hmm. see it cycle through or whatever. I wound up staying there for about an hour. Oh wow. Um, <laughs> I was there for about a good hour. Um I also wanted to go shopping, but I just didn't have a list in mind. So <laughs> it's hard to pick out imported games when you don't know what you're looking for. So yeah, we we did have a very tough time doing that when yeah. when I was there. <laughs> um. So um. So 
the Polymega was set up right in the front, and there were a couple of people already playing it, so I was just kind of hanging back and watching. Mm -hmm. um, and they were playing a, a Japanese fighter game that I didn't know. Okay. Um, because as part of the um, the demo, um, the Polymega was already loaded with a bunch of games. Okay. So um, I think I think there were like um, I want to say he had like for the entire Japanese Saturn collection on there. Oh wow. Because you can rip them, yes, you can rip them to the hard drive. That's one of the keys to it. Um, yeah. And yeah, it will play North American, PAL, and Japanese version of these games. Yep. Oh, Absolutely. Cool. Yeah, so it was really cool. Um, so I watched a little bit of it, and then um, while I was there, um, you know, the rep was there, and then I just started talking to him. His name is Brian Barnell. He was really, really nice, really cool guy. Um, and he, again, he was just there to show off what the Polymeg is all about because a lot of people really don't understand what it is. And um, from what he actually told me, a lot of people are very skeptical of it because yeah. they've been burned. In, well, they've been burned in the past by other retro consoles. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, these consoles are promising things and then they don't really deliver. Yeah. So, <clears throat> so, um, but he was there to you know put everybody's mind at ease, and you know, so he showed us he showed us kind of the general um, the general menu screen and everything like that and how it all works. Uh, and I gotta say, like. Um, if I did not pre-order it before, mm -hmm. I would have pre-ordered it right after I. Oh hit. wow! <laughs> There's no question about it. So okay, <clears throat> excuse me. So, um, the, and there were some things that I didn't know about it too that um, that he filled me in on that I thought was really interesting. So, one thing to note right off the bat is the base console, the base unit. Yeah. Um, the CD-ROM part of the base unit does not get ejected from the unit oh no it's always part of the unit yeah it's always part of the unit the cd slots yeah. at the bottom uh the base unit comes the base unit comes up on its own and okay. um you know like like it's just kind of like a shell yeah that you then swap out for other other units the modules like the Genesis, yeah one, the other modules right um so that was really interesting um another interesting thing was somebody had asked him and it may be on the uh, it may be on my video. Uh, somebody asked him how many controllers you can hook up to it, and he said as many as you want. Because, oh, you mean like to the base unit? Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah, because if you do it wire, you can do wireless. Well, yeah, that's what I'm mad because the base unit looks like it has to be wireless because, like, the base unit, you, like you can't get controllers for each individual CD-ROM system. Not right. like the modules where they'll be like, and you can use the old controllers for the Nintendo, Super Nintendo, and stuff like that. Uh, yeah. But that's still pretty interesting. Okay. Well, you know, it was funny, though. He was using uh, a Sega Saturn uh, controller because he had an, uh, an adapter for it. Oh, I wonder, like, have like retro adapters. I think I yeah. have one right here, actually, now that I think about it. I it's think like RetroBit also puts them out. Yeah, it's like yeah. this. Oh, okay. So, yeah, so like, see, this one I can use a GameCube or a PlayStation. Uh, I'm sorry, N64 or a PlayStation controller. Oh wow, okay. So he had one of these for the Saturn, um, and you know, because it, because it has USB ports, you just put you just plug That's it in. That's why. <clears throat> okay. Oh, I wonder if then yeah. those other ones will work. Hmm. So um, okay. yeah. So anyway, so um, was very very impressed with everything that he had to say about it. The menu design was beautiful, very sleek, very Netflix like. Okay. Um, I can see that. So. And it goes by, you know, it goes by, um, um, it goes by console. And then when you're inside the console, um, it goes by uh, title. You can, do, you can, uh, the organization I love. You can do it by title. You can do it by um, game type. So in other words, you love side-scrolling shooters. So he was like, oh, he's like, look, these are all the shooter games for the Japanese Saturn. Oh, wow. and there were like, there were like twenty of them. Oh, that's um, cool. Yeah, and. You can do it by um, you can do it by rating. So when you're playing your game, uh, you can rate it five stars, four stars, or whatever, mm -hmm. and then you can do search by rating. What are your five star games? Oh wow! So, so that was really cool. Also, um, um, yeah. Well, no, no, no. I was just gonna ask. I don't, if it's on the video, let me know because I don't want to spoil the video. Uh, like, did it show anything specific about the modules? Like, like any gameplay on the modules, or just at least what did they look like? Yeah, so they did do some gameplay. Like, I, I watched a couple of people play, um, like, Marvel vs. Street Fighter and a couple of other games. Okay. Uh, I forget the name. A lot of the games were Japanese that they were trying out. Um, super crisp. Really, like, like the, the HD part of it really pays off. Oh, the cool. games look beautiful. 
um uh you know wait you know just they stay true to the original but again they give it that hd upgrade Mm -hmm. they do have settings in there if you want to make it look like the original (laughs) so they had had done that where you had like the scan lines on it which was really cool (laughs) Uh, you can also go widescreen and make everything fat yeah i never Um, understood that one but yeah i never understood that either he showed it and the guy who was playing was like no 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 (laughs) (laughs) um make it as crappy looking as possible (laughs) exactly um he did that he did back up that um everything in the system like every console they've already got the publisher rights for everything so it's not like a legal emulation okay good good and you know and furthermore it's like anything that uh anything that they offer to download that'll be online Oh, will obviously be something that because you, you're going to be able to purchase games online. I forgot about that. So you know, so everything is fully licensed. So mm-hmm. it's because the only way you're going to get games is if you purchase them online from them, and they're only going to have officially licensed games okay. that they that they have the rights to. Or if you buy the the cartridges or games yourself, insert it and download it to the hard drive. Yeah, you rip it to the hard drive. Did it say anything yeah. about expandable hard drive or anything like that? Uh, it, it, it is expandable up to two terabytes. Oh, oh daddy. I I don't even think I have two terabytes behind me. No, I don't I I don't even think you have like and that includes a, you may have a, a gigabyte at best. <laughs> Probably right. So so anyway, I mean I can I can I can keep going on and on about this. But yeah. I think it would be better at this point to just jump into the video or for the podcast, jump into the audio so you guys can listen to the conversation that I had with Brian Barnella Polymega so you can kind of get an understanding of some of the more uh, – some of the other information about it. And you're going to hear my voice, Brian's voice. You're going to hear somebody else's voice too because there was a third guy there who was kind of interrupting me and asking <laughs> questions. Um, so I don't know who that is, but you'll probably hear him as well. But I again – it's all very informative, and uh, if anybody who's listening uh, is interested in the Polymega, this is definitely worth listening to or watching if you're on YouTube. So let's check that out. So um, this is actually driving right now, so if you want to try like, this one, you can just cruise around and get that ball. So I'm um, trying to go, uh, what, what's, what kind of fighting games do you like, 3D or 2D? Try um, the Saturn collection. Uh, go, go press up, and then go to the on the collections. Go to the right. And keep going until you see Sega Saturn. It's like the next one here. Yeah, Saturn. So try this one, and then um, you can do a search in here. Just uh, go up to the, to the little magnifying glass over there, and then type in uh, Marvel. So here's Marvel superheroes versus Street Fighter. Start a new game. And you have the full info for every game? Like I saw uh, a little I, I have the... the game installed. Oh yeah, the database yeah, has everything. The... Yeah. Wow. You don't have to connect to the internet or anything either. It just works. Cool. This is all running our um, proprietary uh, Sega Saturn BIOS, so it's all, all right. like legal, you don't have to like size it. Oh, that's cool. And then are the uh, controllers um, wired or wireless? Um, these are actually wireless, so uh, this is okay. the box here. And I'll show you the. I hope you don't mind I'm taking video for my podcast. So. I don't care, yeah. All right, cool. Good. And I've already got this on pre order. So. <laughs> no problem. Yeah. So, um, so this one. Let's open this. Sure. So inside the box here, mm-hmm. so this is the dongle that it comes with. Okay. So it's got a wireless 2.4 oh, gigahertz dongle, and you can uh, you can use that. Any of the universal controllers have that. Um, awesome. I keep it when we're doing these long you know demo days. I usually keep it wired because it's like it, you know, the battery's gonna it. die. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I don't want that to happen. Anymore. And I don't want that thing to get lost. So. Makes sense. Oh, I 
See also, and then, yeah, and then I'm good. Well, I'm, I'm already sold on this. I'm sold on it when you kickstarted it in the beginning. <laughs> nice. So, so, um, so yeah, this is the home screen. You have your game collection. So mm -hmm. every every time you install a game, the first game that goes into the collection is like one of these tiles of yours. Okay. So if I insert my first PlayStation game, I get a PlayStation. Okay, so they don't just exist there. So in other words, if I don't have any PlayStation loaded up, it won't be up there. That's right. So, yeah. So yeah. you won't open it and find nothing. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. So, um, so as your collection grows, um, it could be small number of games. Like maybe, uh, like we'll look at Super Graphics here, which only has a couple games. Of course. Like you know, your collection of these games is only seven because there's only like five or you know, seven games. On yeah. Um, but it could go all the way up to you know, things like PC Engine games, like mm -hmm. four, almost 400 PC Engine. Games. Nice. And um, so each one of these views, this is the what we call uh, like your collection view. Mm -hmm. um, so you can see all the different games that you have, and everything's like all sorted. So we have a custom database that's built with all this art and everything that was done specifically for this system. And that's amazing. Yeah, that's amazing because that's a lot of art. <laughs> it's a lot of art. Yeah, I mean, there's there's 14,000 games. Like we've been working wow. really hard on this, and that's why one of the reasons why it's taken a long time. We wanted the experience to be really good, even if it's taken a little while. Like it had to be really good. So um, I. So you can sort any of your games by alphabetical. Like okay. This. Um, and this will work for other languages too, like Japanese and everything. Um, you can sort it by the genre. So if I'm like, oh, I just want to see my shooters. You cool. Jump down to shooting games. So here you go. This is all shooter, like 2D, 2D shooters for the PC Engine CD. Oh, nice. Yeah. And um, for many of these, if you see something that you want to play or you want to look into, uh, you can. No way. Uh, I have a friend who's obsessed with 2D shooters, so this is like he's very excited. So if I look at Gate of Thunder here, so I can see information about it. I can see who the publisher was, the developer, and everything. I can nice. see screenshots of the game. Wow. Um, I can also manage it. I can add it to my favorites. I can delete its installation data, like whatever I want to do with it. Okay. Uh, I can also rate the game. Nice. So if I'm like, okay, I want to have like, like I have a huge collection. I want to have them all on here, but I want the ones that I'm like that are that I really care about and want to play. Okay. Easily accessible. I can rate it, and then when I'm in this view here, I can sort my rating. You can sort it by. Oh, so here's nice. My, my five star games. Now is it just you, or is like like do people online rate it? Do you see like an overall rating for uh, everybody? We'll have that or eventually. No? So okay. right now it's just you. But, okay. Um, so it works kind of like uh, like iTunes. Okay. Cool. Uh, but yeah, eventually we'll have uh, we'll have uh, more community community based features. Okay. And then where it says players, is that like you know if it's a multiplayer game, the you can do it. But oh, nice. Yeah. So you can and, see it And on. I think you were saying before you can hook up as many controllers as you want. Correct? Yeah. Yeah. So if you're like I want as long as they're compatible. I've got of course. a party of people coming over and we want to play some turn-based strategy. <laughs> mm -hmm. Hey, I know some people. <laughs> oh, you? Okay, I was uh, you know, what? yeah, I mean, they made the game for somebody. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, I always, did, there was so many of these, uh, of these uh, Nobunaga series games. Yeah, yeah you know, Nobunaga's a big It's game. insane. Uh, one through, like, 12 now. Well, so, so now we're sitting and here And now talking. there's Romance of the Free Kingdoms and all that. So now we're sitting here talking about it, but I'm like, okay, well, maybe I'm curious about what, what this game is and who made it. So the publisher was Koei, the developer was Koei too, and the genre was strategy turn-based. So we can just see other stuff that they, well, you have a little Oops. debug mention. It was just a debug message. Ah, uh, I gotcha. But, uh, interesting, okay. So, so yeah, you can see all the different games that, that they put out by year. So here's your... Oh, wow. 
that's all that's database. awesome. So I can see everything from Poe here that's in our in our database right now. Very cool. This is the one that's it's telling me I don't have. So that oh, so that one's giving it. What, the, what it you're is, is an error it's, message. A, it's actually a uh, this game is a is a programming. I'm sorry, it's a it's a word processing application for Saturn. Oh wow. Uh, and it's, it's one of the, the very few games that's not compatible with our system, so I mean, it's actually really good from our database. You know what? If, if somebody's buying this specifically for word processing, I think yeah, yeah, yeah. Not, not exactly. <laughs> Well, it's currently not compatible. It may be yeah. compatible someday, but you need like a whole like like typewriter. And really exactly. So, with how the system is now, is I know I like I, I talk to you on Twitter about this. How there's a lot of skepticism about it. Sure. Yeah, yeah. I mean, even with myself, to be dead honest, I went in, I was about to pre-order it, then the radio silence, which you know, especially when it comes to the world of like you know trust us. People want everything. Yeah. All, all well, it's not. It's not a matter of. It's like you did the Kickstarter and then you you basically ran your Kickstarter in line with when so many people were just scamming it. Yeah, yeah, true. Yeah, yeah. Thing. yeah we, were, um, we were wrong there. Yeah. yeah so with uh, and I like I said I got onto the second round and I got the big the ultimate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The ultimate. Um, but when it comes down to the livelihood of the system, like it, it's uh, it's, uh, it's uh, lifespan. Uh huh. Are you looking to make sure that it just constantly gets upgraded as things go progress on? Yeah, but I mean, this is meant to sort of meant to live as a uh, as an evolving and breathing project. And, cool. Uh, right now, we think that Polymega in this form will continue uh, to be available until about 2032 or so. Okay. And um, so that's like all of our parts that are inside of it and everything. Like that's uh, that's the end of life for the. For all the right. Program. Cool. So, um, so through that time, we plan to support as many systems as possible, um, provide new community, community features for the system, uh, and just do more and more stuff with it. Now, the one thing that you did uh, talk about, uh, at least we talked about, was when I uh, asked about uh, like having the different adapters that would go inside the system for the uh, like, uh, Genesis and Master System and the power base. Actually, right, yeah, yeah. So, so... so my question is, is that is that a database issue, or is that going to be just an entirely new emulation? It's, it's a database issue. Okay. That's all it is. Um, and that's why we can update the system right. to include support for it later. Mm -hmm. um, we also don't have the bandwidth to make like adapters and stuff like that. So, oh, no. So well, even, the, even with that, there's a, there are diamond pieces. But yeah, you can get them anywhere, and, and I think it's like, uh, I if I can get some help, like we're about to make a, a hire, like a pretty high profile hire for the company, right. um, who will help me manage my time, I can help get some of that stuff done okay. for other people. So uh, if that can happen, then I think that we'll be in pretty good shape. Hey man, if you need temporary donations and stuff like that, I know you're in LA, I'll drive over. <laughs> nice. Time. Yeah, do, do some collection work for Polymega. <laughs> Do you plan on going pre NES though? Like you're looking at Atari's, Coleco, yeah, all sure, that yeah. stuff. Yeah, it was. Um, I think. I mean, NES was a great base to start with, of course. We had to we had to prioritize what we were. Yeah. We, Atari was in our original launch list, and then we we pulled it off based on um, some like one of our internal electrical engineers was like, four is, is enough. I, I mean, maybe five is too much for me. Yeah. So we're like, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll drop Atari for right now. It's one less it's a, one less control. We had to design. Of course. There was, there was big effects when we did that, so it allowed us to, to get all the stuff done that we needed to get done. Okay, cool. Um, Very cool. Yeah, and then uh, some of the other features here. Um, so it seems like with the continue playing, you have multiple save states. Um, these are actually not save states; these are just the games themselves. Oh, okay. So if you if you go to like, um, let's see, what were we playing? No, I I'll show you that in one second. I just want to show you the save state. Okay. How many save states can you have for a game? Tons. Is there just. Well, this one has one here. So you can start from save state right here. Okay. okay. I love this. So it's really fast. There's no like. Yeah, that was, that was just like almost instantaneous. Yeah. Some people have thought that we were faking stuff because it was so fast. So, like, oh, it needs to take. X amount of time because that's what I really want to do those. Right. But our system is, is made for this. It's not like it's something you're very really good to like it. Yeah, yeah and that's great because that's definitely one of the things that, yeah, that's definitely a, a big plus. Yeah, it's, um, this was a system like, you know, 
we wanted it to be like this is a game. There's just so much friction when you're trying to set up emulators and everything. It's, for some people, it's dead easy, but for most people, it's it's a whole world. You have to yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you just and want the simplicity. You don't have time for me. You know, spend weekends, weekends, setting it up. Yeah, you just want the simplicity. Yeah. Cool. Really, really cool. All right, so the summer is upon us, if the weather tells me anything. And, uh,. We got a lot of stuff coming up this... Well, gaming on Long Island has a lot of stuff coming up this summer. Yes, they do. <laughs> so coming up this weekend actually will be CradleCon. Not as much gaming, but just kind of like a uh, a convention uh, coming up this weekend, June 1st and June 2nd at the Cradle of Aviation Museum. Uh, check them out. Of course, you can go to the Cradle of Aviation's Facebook page or CradleCon's Facebook page. Uh, mm -hmm. to check out all the information there. And of course, as the muscle car passes by my window... The Long Island Retro Gaming Expo, uh, which the retro gamers will be represented there. Yes, uh, August, we will. August 10th and 11th, SummerSlam weekend. Ooh, baby. Was, yeah, so instead of going to Toronto, I'm going to Garden City. But I'm actually excited about this because we're actually going to have a table. We're going to yes. broadcast, and hopefully you'll be there. Uh, I am hoping to be there. I unfortunately cannot guarantee it because of uh, extenuating circumstances going on here in Los Angeles that I can't speak about right now. Fair enough. All right. Interesting. Um, but in one way, shape, or form, Anthony will be there <laughs> with a virtual. I will be. I, will be I, I, I may be there virtually, but uh, I will. I plan to be there that weekend, one way or the other. Awesome. So uh, again, get your tickets early for the Long Island Retro Gaming Expo because uh, they're a little bit cheaper than buying them at the door. And besides the gaming, besides the tabletop gaming they're having, I do believe they may have even have a pinball tournament going on. Ooh, nice. I would lose. Really? You know, I thought you were good at pinball. I'm terrible at pinball. Oh, all right. Well, fair enough. Never been so, my thing. <laughs> so he is not a pinball wizard. No, definitely not. <laughs> So, uh, again, check them out. We will be there. And if you're there, come check us out at the Long Island Retro Gaming Expo. See you guys there. All right. So, a lot of good stuff. That was awesome. Uh, awesome conversation you had there with Brian, mm -hmm. the Polymega. My and cat we... is stabbing me. Sorry. Uh oh. <laughs> the pain. The pain. The pain. Oh. The pain of cats. Him, he, he's never on the show. She. Oh, she? Yeah. She's never She's... on the show. So, this is Snow. <laughs> doesn't want to be on the show i say not like no no one. she definitely does not you don't want to be on the show do you whoa <laughs> no you don't right and as anthony's <laughs> eyes get gouged out of out of his head well, uh, she's, guess, I'll get she's very well behaved yeah <laughs> except when she's not <laughs> so let's talk, let's talk about some news as Here. uh oh boy i think that's right off camera thank goodness <laughs> oh good <laughs> Now, now, now it's getting weird, folks. Well, now she's um, going to step on my keyboard and disconnect me. Disconnect the whole thing. So <laughs> I just want to make mention real quick because I think you've, I think you've beat the game already with uh, Odyssey, uh, Super yes. Mario Odyssey. That is, I, um, I took a little bit of a hiatus with it, and then mm -hmm. recently I'm like, all right, you know what? I'm back. I'm upstairs. We pick up the game again. Started playing again. <clears throat> Excuse me. Picking up some more moons. Finally broke 500 moons. That's congratulations. How, that's how long I haven't played it. Thank you. Uh, not realizing there's a whole nother level at this point, the darker side of the moon. And, oh, yes. Uh, it is from Satan's Hellmouth that this level exists. Um, I think there's seven stage, seven levels of hell. Um, this one's eight, nine, and ten. Nice. I hate, you know what your level I'm talking about? No, I do because I completed it. Yeah, it's. It, it, what basically what it is, it just takes elements of all the other worlds, all the other planets that you've played, and kind of factors it into one giant level that is ridiculously long, mm -hmm. and there's no there's no checkpoints on this freaking thing, mm -hmm. so you gotta run through it in one shot. Yep, I almost broke my television. I almost threw the switch out the GD window. I I take it you have not <laughs> completed it yet. No, I keep getting a little bit th further, a little bit further. Uh, I must have played the level at least 15 times already. No, wow. got to be more than that. Maybe 20. I, I can I can feel your pain, Larry. I am I'm I'm going through a similar experience on a different game, but um 
Uh, I remember that board on Mario Odyssey. It was it was definitely a hump. Um, but when, once you get through it, you will feel happy. You will feel accomplished <laughs> on your way to collecting all 999 moons. That's a whole nother point to contend with. But God, you know, the ones who created that level, I will meet you in hell. <laughs> yes. Because it is terrible. You definitely will. Uh, and you know what they'll do? Then they'll just have you play it, you know, for eternity. <laughs> Ad nauseum. Yeah. Um, so, and another game on Switch that actually you played a little bit uh, live, and I watched. I'm curious how the Switch, because the Switch is going to stop putting out some board games. Uh, mm-hmm. You downloaded and played Clue. I downloaded and played Clue. Um, Clue is my favorite board game of all time, hands down. Yep. And I've played a lot of board games. Huh. Uh, you can see some of them behind me. Yeah, some of them. Yeah. yeah, some yeah. of them are hiding over there. But um, uh, Clue That's is by far one future. of my favorites. What? Is that Back to the Future, the board game? Yes. Oh, weird. Okay. It's a card game. Oh. Uh, interesting game. It, ha- it has it has some issues, but uh, <laughs> it, it's still kind of fun. All right. We're going to do a board game episode later. One yeah, day. We still, we, yeah, we've been talking about doing a board game episode yep. forever, and we're going to have to follow through. It's going to have to be like when we're together in person, because then we can show off some of this. This is so. true. See how bad I am and how good he is. Exactly. <laughs> uh, but what else is new? So, um, now I lost my train of thought. Uh, Clue. So, Clue. Download a Clue. On the Switch. Um, and what was cool about this is um, now it's the standard fair clue, uh, but there's a lot more added to it. So I bought the, because there's um, the you can buy the standard version or you can buy the standard version with the season pass. Oh, there we have season standard. passes. Okay. Yeah. So for an extra 10 bucks, you get the season pass, and the season pass allows you to download all of the extras, including future extras that they bring mm-hmm. out. Okay. Uh, and me, I'm a big traditionalist. I like the, you know, just give me the original version and I'll sit down mm-hmm. and play that. But they have, I want to say, six or seven different versions in there. Oh, wow. And they're actually really, really interesting. So they have, like, different themes. Like, there's Masquerade. I think there's Wild West. Um, My particular favorite of the other themes, uh, Sherlock Holmes. Oh, wow. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, and the board is set up with Sherlock Holmes-specific locations. So, like, 221 Baker Street, uh, Dark Alley. Basically, basically, places in London um, hmm. are are the uh, are the um, rooms, so to speak. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, and the game plays like a standard version of Clue. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, where you have to figure out who did it with what and you know where. Yeah. Um, Very straightforward. Can, yeah. Now you can and you can play. You know, you can play in your house. You can pl- uh, by yourself with um, AI, or you can play online. There's online. Oh, uh, okay. which is really cool. So it'd be cool to actually play people online. And then specifically, um, apparently what they did also was or one of the things that you that um, is an issue with playing a game like Clue is you get a sheet that you kind of check boxes off and X out things as mm-hmm. you rule out certain things in the game, like certain weapons, certain <clears throat> people. Yeah. Now, how do you have like, let's say you have a group over and you want to play Clue. Mm hmm. How are you supposed to do that when everybody can see the television screen? Because they'll see your sheet. Ah, yes. You can download. They have an app you can download. So oh, that you can yes. keep the sheet on your phone. That's cool. And play with everybody else in the room. I've seen, You know, they're starting to do a lot of that. Like uh, Uno, uh, at least for the PS4 version. I don't know if the Switch version is the same. But Uno on the PS4, yeah, you can play on the PS4 with your phone. And, almost pull everything out of the wall and then your phone will act as the card deck so then oh. you can swipe through and then just you know flick towards the screen and then your your card will hit the screen so that's an awesome idea because then i got to imagine when you're on the go then just the switch when it's in portable mode will just act as um as the board at that point yeah. that's cool yeah basically so um definitely um uh well thought out, um, well thought out board game. Uh, and uh, again, if you're a fan of Clue, I recommend downloading the Switch and playing me. All right, sweet, sounds good. Well, that's not the only stuff. To now we have like some news, like news, news. Ooh, news, news. What's going yeah, on besides? Let's, let's get into it. Uh, some more old games. Why not? Uh, now we've seen uh, some some games actually come out in this fashion uh, through I M Eight Bit is re-releasing Earthworm Jim 1 and 2, uh, re-releasing it back on the Super Nintendo. Yes. On SNES cartridges. 
which is awesome because yes. if you have it, if you have a Super Nintendo or if you've pre-ordered your Poly Mega um, yep. with the Super Nintendo module, you'll be able to actually play. Uh, yeah, and you know, and these are official reproductions, so they are legitimate. Um, I am 8-Bit also previously put out, you may remember, uh, Super NES, Mega Man X, and on the NES, Mega Man 2 uh, mm -hmm. were re-released. So now here's what's cool about this. Um, the It's the 25th anniversary mm -hmm. of Earthworm Jim. And as you know, I think we talked about, me and Mario may talk about it last week. I can't remember where me and you may talk about it a couple weeks ago. The original group, the original team, the developers of the first Earthworm Jim yeah. are going to be making a brand new Earthworm Jim on the new Intellivision. That's correct. That's yeah. coming out. So this is good timing. Uh, the cartridges will be pink cartridges, which I think are cute. Maybe not as much pink as whatever color a worm is, like whatever color, like flesh, like Earthworm uh, Jim is. I always, yeah, I always felt like they were either fleshy or sandy. Yeah. Um, but I'm trying to see. Oh, here we go. 2,000 copies, and it's random, completely random, unless you guys go on eBay, will be a cow pattern on the SNES cartridge, yep. which I think is hysterical. That's awesome. Uh, the pre-orders started already, so you can forget about it. Uh, it was on May 21st, so a lot of them probably... Actually, you know what? Maybe not too many are pre-ordered, because here's the thing, and this was my issue with the Mega Man games. It's $135. Yeah, they are expensive. They are expensive so, for these. I mean, you're getting these cool prints. You're getting the cool cartridges. It's on the SNES. Oh, Utter Pink. That's what it is. It's, it's colored like an Utter. That's right. Uh, that makes sense. Um. Oh, I'm sorry. Only uh, the oh, uh, I let me correct myself. Two thousand copies. Period are being made. A hundred of them will have the cow pattern. I'm sorry. Got it. All right, there we go. So you have a five percent chance of getting the cow pattern. One out of twenty. Yep. So, um, but still, man, that 135. I mean, look, I've spent money. So, yep. but 135 dollars for Earthworm Jim one into. Hey, look, if you like the games, go for it. You know what I mean? Well, and that's the thing. If you're a big fan, like, in other words, if this was a special, like, Chrono Trigger um, release, I would buy it. All right. You know, it all just, it just all depends on, you know, on how much you love Earthworm Jim. If you're a huge Earthworm Jim fan, this may be appealing to you. There you go. Um, uh, and which also made me think of something else really quickly before you jump over. Yeah, it, because, go for it. Uh, I got an email from your favorite place, Limited Run Games. And... Uh... Well, I will be I will be polite, as my mother said. If you have nothing nice to say, then don't say anything. Oh, I thought if is if you have not, if you have nothing nice to say, scream it really loudly what? on social media. <laughs> yeah, but you know, uh, that was the old me. <laughs> yes, um, but uh, limited run games. Uh, I don't know if it's still active or not, but I just got an email from them. I think last week yes. um, that they released the Dragon's Lair trilogy on the Switch. I saw that. Yes, I saw of it. Yes, so uh, I just very wanted to bring that up. Very interesting. A uh, friend of mine at work who uh, always coming over to my desk. We talk. Uh, he's very into retro games. I mean, he is all you want to talk about, like just an encyclopedia of knowledge. This guy knows his stuff, um, and I've told him about my dislike of limited run. And I remember he came by one Friday, just rocking a limited run T-shirt. Nice. <laughs> I was like. You you keep moving or I'm going to HR. Oh, I should get one of those. <laughs> God, I hate them. Uh, okay, so coming up next, speaking of encyclopedia, actually, a new NES encyclopedia yes. is coming out. So uh, as if you didn't, as if we weren't able to give you enough information about the system that we grew up loving, you Which can now not. get even more info. Yeah, because we never claimed to be the encyclopedia of gaming. No, definitely not. <laughs> Um, so, uh, Chris, I'm going to mispronounce his last name. Uh, Solian, Scolian, uh, is the journalist and actually at Nintendo Life, where I'm getting the information from, uh, who put together this stuff. Uh, oh, it's going to aim to document all, quoting, 714 officially licensed games released during the console's lifespan. This does not include Famicom. So, this is straight up Nintendo Entertainment System, the NES. Yep. 
uh, as well as over 160 unlicensed titles, which cover everything from Tengen's, uh, Tengen, excuse me, illegally dubious output, which legally dubious output, which I love their uh, design contr- uh, cartridges. Right, same here. Yep. Um, to the religious games, to the erotic games like the Bubble Baths Babes, yes. as we may have seen. Um, so this is pretty interesting. Um, you know, it's, I mean, don't get me wrong. This looks awesome. Definitely go check it out. I'm trying to see if it's already out or, or when it comes out. Um, this almost reminds me a little bit, but it goes into more detail. Kind of like the Pat the NES Punk yes. uh, NES book. That's exactly yeah. what it reminded me of because I yeah. saw it. I said, oh, this is interesting. I'm like, wait, I have something like this. So, uh, But I think it probably goes into a little bit more detail. Um, but still, it's very cool. Check out wherever you buy books. Um, it's, it's it looks straightforward and it looks really sweet. The NES Encyclopedia. Yep. So check it out. Uh, all right. Up next, this is interesting. Ant, you you gave me a heads up about this. Um, do you want to mention real quick this? We talked about it before. The Evercade. Oh yeah, the Evercade. So the Evercade is this new um, handheld console that uh, is being developed. Um, it kind of looks like it almost looks like a little bit like a Nintendo Switch in a way. Um, that's like the, the, the pseudo design. Yeah, kind of, sort of, probably a little smaller. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it does. It doesn't have like the HD screen or anything like no. that. But you know, if you imagine that design look, um, that's kind of what they're going for with it mm-hmm. uh, in a way. Uh, but the color scheme of it looks a little like the Famicom to it me. It does, yeah. It it's no, got it the does. Famicom color scheme. Right. Uh, and the whole idea behind it is that it's gonna be cartridge based. You're gonna have little cartridges with game collections that you can insert and play. And these are not. Um, first party games. They're not creating the games. They're actually getting licensed retro games for the console. And I believe, Larry, we got our first uh, batch listed. First or second? Um, a couple, second. actually. Yeah. yeah, let me. Um, so we'll talk about this is out of order. Uh, Interplay, which was a wonderful company talking about Earthworm Jim. Mm-hmm. Um, Interplay is putting, and they're, like Anthony said, they're coming on cartridges. So the first collection of Interplay games. On the cartridge will be Clay Fighter, which yes. was a great fighter. That was that, I remember was, that, that was, game. That was fun. That was weird, but it was good. It was fun and weird, but yeah. <laughs> um, Earthworm Jim. So there you go. There's another there version go. of the game. Uh, Battle Chess. I may have. I may have that actually. Yes, I I used to have Battle Chess. I don't Battle have it anymore. Uh, one of my personal favorites, Booger Man. Yes, Booger Man. <laughs> Booger. Uh, Dragon Wars. Okay. Incantation and Titan. Last two I don't remember, to be honest with you. Um, Titan, I don't know either. But Booger Man was awesome. I love Booger Man. Man was a fun game. But that's a cool <laughs> little batch. You get like, what is it, seven yeah. games? One, two, three, four, five, six. Six games. Okay. Yep. Now, uh, four, eight. Now, if you want to get ten games in a cartridge, uh, and I don't remember if we talked about this last time, the Data East collection. Yes. Now we these collections have come out. Some types of collections like this have come out. I think I have a Data East collection on the on the Wii, uh, but this one has here we go, Bad Dudes, nice Burger Time, awesome. Which I think I've mentioned in the past. I'm not a fan of. Yeah, I love Burger Time. <laughs> Midnight Resistance, mm-hmm. uh, Side Pocket. Remember that pool game? I Side loved Side Pocket. I yeah. had that on the Genesis. I may still have it on Genesis That's actually. Okay. Uh, Karate Champ. Excellent game. Joe and Mac 2. It's interesting. The second one. Joe and Mac huh. 2. Lost in the topics. Interesting. Uh, Fighter's History. That was a good fighting game. Okay. A uh, good game. Uh, two Crude Dudes. I think that just came out on the Switch recently. Oh, wow. Uh, Magical Drop 2. And Burning Rubber. I don't remember Burning Rubber. I don't remember Burning Rubber either. So that's that's pretty cool. Uh, the console will be available in a standard edition with a single cartridge for sixty pounds. No, I'm sorry, eighty bucks. There you go. Sixty euros. Ah, oh, whatever. Eighty 60 bucks. Sixty euro. And then premium version with all three cartridges. The first set of cartridge will be the Atari Twenty Six Hundred yes. collection. Uh, I probably, I don't have the games in front of me on that one, but there's probably a buttload of them. Um, and then the premium where you get all three cartridges will be a hundred dollars. Mm-hmm. Uh, no release date yet, but they're expecting fourth quarter, so holiday time. Okay. So that being said, expect it probably next year. <laughs> exactly. Uh, no, I mean, if they hold to it, we'll have it in the fourth quarter. It'll be the perfect little Christmas gift for people. 
Speaking of being held till next year, let's touch on this real quick. So we have a new release date for a Sonic the Hedgehog movie. Oh, yes, we do. Uh, so I guess they're getting a little more time that they won't be able to deliver the November release date. So the new tentative release date is uh, Valentine's Day 2020. Yeah. Well, you know, nothing says I love you like a blue haired hedgehog. <laughs> that looks like um, a child. Now, you know, I just want to mention real quick the 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 one thing that when I when I was reading about that, um, it's concerning me. My biggest concern with Sonic, and everyone knows the story already, but like, all right, his teeth were one thing, his body was a little bit of another, but his eyes bugged me. See, I had an issue with the eyes, and I thought that was gonna be the biggest concern. I feel like a, they're like, we're gonna fix everything, but like his teeth were the biggest concern. Well, a was... lot of people complained about the teeth. That's why. Oh, um, everybody well, came out and said, why, oh, why does this hedgehog have human teeth? It's really unnerving. And, and, it, and it is. When you see the it teeth, is. it's kind of like, it's very but, weird. If they um, give them hedgehog teeth, it's going to be weirder. Well, I, I mean, I, they're, what they're going to wind up doing is they're going to do some testing, and then they'll figure out what to do. But they're, they're basically, the whole thing is kind of getting a little bit of an overhaul, and it's significant enough that they're going to delay the film a few months. And you know what, though? I think... Um, for their sake, it's probably the right move. Um, whatever they, will make it work. Yeah, exactly. Whatever makes it work. Um, pushing it to Valentine's Day, not sure that's the smartest release date for a film like this because Valentine's Day is more, you know, you're looking for more of your romantic film releases. So I don't mm -hmm. know how that's going to work. But right. we'll see what happens. All righty. And then finally, this thing is really cool. I got to get, get my wrist on this. Wah, wah. Um, a Game Boy officially licensed nintendo game boy color watch yes is coming out uh right now over in the uk uh 24.99 euros or whatever that comes out to and it's very it's a straight up game boy color watch yeah it looks and it looks really cool it's it a digital does. it's a digital watch right it's it, it is. Yeah. It's digital watch because um, it's analog. I'd never be able to read it. Mm -hmm. um, so it's to quote, it's a wristwatch with a Game Boy Color design. Uh, time, date, and alarm are set using the Game Boy buttons. Nice. Uh, plus strap. Miniature version of the Game Boy Color, so it's not like a full size. That would just be heavy. Mm -hmm. Officially licensed by Nintendo. Uh, yeah, it's very cool. It's kind of got like, um, I mean, if you would think of a uh, like an LCD, it's kind of like mm -hmm. reverse where it's mostly a black screen and then the numbers are, are clear. Uh, but it looks really cool. I, I kind of kind of kind of get a kick out of that. Nice. So that will be interesting. No, you cannot play games on it. No, you cannot hack it. Um, it is only a Game Boy Color camera uh, uh, watch. Yeah, and it will be in Larry's collection and on his shelf soon. May well, they have a regular Game Boy looking watch that I still haven't gotten yet. All right, well, I can I'm see you adding it. People. Yeah, I will. So, uh, and with that, that's basically about it. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, I think we're gonna, yeah, I think we're gonna wrap this one up. That was that was a good one. Yeah, no, I mean, it's always good talking games. You know, I love talking games. Uh, I'm, and of course, after we're done here, I'm eager to get back to my gaming. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna go watch Raw. And um, oh, that's right, it is Monday it that we're is. recording this. It is Monday Night Raw. Yes. Um, yeah, I don't have to worry about that because I'll read it tomorrow. <laughs> well, I don't have cable, so I got to somehow dial it up. Anyway, uh, okay. But uh, um, yeah, no, this is this is always good. Um, yes. uh, yeah, again, um, I, I'm trying to think if there are any games on the horizon I've been looking at. I've been I've been kind of just really immersed in um, Beat Saber on PlayStation VR. So, <laughs> I gotta get mine hooked up. Yeah, it's uh, it's by far and away the best game on the system, and I really can't wait for more songs to come out. Uh, I am currently trying to finish uh, songs on Expert Plus mode. Oh, excuse me. Yeah, so Are you flipping around the room and stuff like that now. Uh, yeah, it, it, I, you know what? I'm afraid of what I look like when I'm trying to do <laughs> extra plus. I was like, and not only that, but um, the tendonitis in my arms <laughs> is coming back because oh that. Yeah, like I can get like maybe two or three songs in, and I gotta take a break. <laughs> oh, well, uh, well, at least the cardio that helps, right? It helps. Awesome. So, Aunt, where can they find us? Where can the people? contact us okay so the people can find us anywhere you listen to podcasts spreaker itunes amazon alexa you name it we're on there spotify we're on there too uh if you listen to us on itunes please 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 leave us a, a five-star rating we really appreciate that 
Um, you can also watch us on YouTube. Um, yes. Just look up the Retro Gamers Podcast. We post our we post our podcast as a video now on YouTube. Uh, you can find us on Instagram at Retro Gamers Podcast. Our regular website www.theretrogamers.com, or you can email us at email at theretrogamers.com. There you go. And uh, with that, Ant, I will catch you next week. Yes, and I will unfortunately catch you again next week. There we go. And folks, we will catch you right here next week on the Retro Gamers Podcast.